there, my name is Taylor McCormick. I'm a graphic design major at the University of Tampa, and this is my design defense for my capstone project. When I first started this project, I created two goals. The first one was help others, and the second one was find what nobody else is doing in society and do it. Since I wanted to help others, I turned towards design for accessibility for inspiration. If you don't know what design for accessibility is, all it means is designing for uh, while keeping those with disabilities in mind. And I also looked to children's books for inspiration, and what I realized was that there's a limited supply of children's books made for those with disabilities. So for my project, I ended up combining these two ideas of accessibility and children's books, and what I created was a children's book centered around design for accessibility. So what this means is a book that incorporates elements such as braille, the dyslexia font, and colorblind friendly colors. What I do want to add is that this is not a book for people with disabilities. This is a book for everyone and it's meant to be inclusive. So to start my project, I created a mind map. I wrote down several words that I thought related to my project and then I branched those off to words that related to those words. What this mind map made me realize is how much research was necessary for this project, not only online or within libraries, but in interviews also. I conducted eight interviews in total, and this was either with people who have disabilities or individuals who work with children who have disabilities. I'll get more into what I learned about as I go through this video, but just to give you context on these two images, um, these are some sources that were shared with me while I was conducting my interviews. I have two personas for my project. The first one is Cameron Young. He's a seven-year-old boy. He is on the autism spectrum, and he often feels left out or different um, compared to his classmates, and he needs a book that's going to remind him that it's okay to be different. My second persona is Stacy Jones. She's 29 years old, and she's a first grade teacher, and she needs a book that's going to teach her first grade class more about accepting others, and it's okay to be different. For my illustration design, I drew inspiration from Eric Carle, specifically um, his collage looking illustrations um, and how they kind of have a textured look to them. And one thing I learned in my interviews was that for certain children on the autism spectrums, rhyming poetry can help them follow along with the story better. So I turned to Shel Silverstein for inspiration because he writes very uh, funny uh, childlike poetry and they're very creative and I felt like he was a great place to start. So for my storyline, um, so the story ended up being about a butterfly who is missing a wing and through his journey of life he learns that it's okay to be different and he just has to do things his own special way. Um, I did storyboarding to create this uh, idea for a book and um, it does rhyme, it is a poem. And so my color palettes, you might be wondering why there's two color palettes here. So one thing I learned in my interviews is that while uh, the visually, some people who are visually paired tend to favor colors that are vibrant and high contrasting, individuals that either have dyslexia or autism sometimes favor colors that are much more low contrasting and they get very distracted by high contrasting colors. So in order to cater to both groups, I just made two different versions of the books. And so these color palettes right here are just to demonstrate the two different um, palettes between both books. So for the typefaces in the book, um, I used the Open Dyslexic typeface, and this is a typeface that is created for individuals on the dyslexia spectrum. And the typeface is manipulated so that each letter form is easily distinguished. I also have Braille in my book, and you might be wondering how I put Braille into my book. So one of my interviewees was Sue Glaser, and she works for the Florida Instructional Materials for the Visually Impaired and Blind, and she was kind enough to translate the whole book into Braille for me and put it onto an adhesive paper that I was later able to just stick onto the final copy of my book. So one of the things I learned in my, uh, in my interviews is that um, individuals on the autism spectrum can comprehend or sometimes comprehend an image better when it's encased within a shape. So since my book is about a butterfly who is missing a wing, it was appropriate to put the illustrations and the bodies of text within the shape of butterfly wings. This also helped to reinforce the theme. So these are the illustration designs. You might notice the off-white background and that is there because one of the things I learned in my interviews is that children on the autism spectrum 
um, sometimes get very distracted by a bright white background. So to combat that, I just put a uh, off-white beige background. You might also notice that there's braille at the bottom of the page. Um, the braille to the left of the page numbers is just the number in braille and below the illustration is a caption so individuals who are visually impaired or blind can still participate in the illustration aspect of the book in their own way and they can still understand what's being presented even if they can't see it. I do want to add that I tested these illustrations using a software to see how they would look um, depending on if a person has color blindness and what type of color blindness they had. And I made sure that all of my illustrations, no matter what type of color blindness an individual has, they'd still be able to make out what the illustration is. So for the cover design, this is a good part to say that I decided to title my book Butter because um, within the story, the butterfly who is missing a wing gets nicknamed Butter because he's a butterfly who can't fly. So these are the designs side by side. Uh, you have the bright version and the low contrasting version. And these are the hard covers of the book. Low contrasting version. And this is the final book. Everything is translated into braille. And I use a, um, a synthetic paper that is waterproof. That way, if an individual has a drooling problem, they wouldn't damage the book. I also created worksheets because my book is a good teaching tool and can help individuals learn about Braille or um, just learn about accepting yourself or others. And so I created two, uh, worksheets to further this idea. I also have an audiobook and two digital books for anyone who has issues with flipping pages or needs to zoom in. And all of these components are on a website that I've created. And this website also features a page that goes more into depth about each um, design accessible aspect of my book. And this is the link to the website if you'd like to visit it. Thank you so much.